Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, guys. Stay, you with me? Shalom. And in today's class, we're going to be talking about the Catholic Church and their alleged worship of the Mother Mary. Okay. Um, we actually tried this class yesterday, guys, just so you know. Um, this is our second time recording this class. There was a problem with the recording the first time. So you're missing the element of surprise that we normally like to do when we bring Stacy in on these classes. Mm -hmm. So she already knows the conclusion. But just to be fair, we're going to let her in as we redo the class all together. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're talking about whether the Catholics worship Mary. Yeah. I was very um, surprised to find out the true answer. Yeah, we have a lot of people here will be surprised to find out the answer to that question of whether the Catholics worship Mary or not. But before we get into this, I want to make it clear that I'm not here to offend anybody. I'm not here to revile the gods or anything like that. If you so choose um, to continue the practice, because I know a lot of People watching this video are Catholics mm -hmm. or many are ex-Catholics and so if they want to continue that practice they won't affect us at all over here that's kind of their business right we have family members that's Catholic yeah mm -hmm. but the, the intent of this video however is to educate those who don't know right who want to know the truth who want to worship our Heavenly Father hallowed be his name who want to be in line with what we are supposed to be doing and are not sure if their worship or their veneration is placed in the right place down there at the Catholic Church. This will be an educational class as to what's actually going on down there. Who information. Is yeah, information um, on who it is that they're actually worshiping down there. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, like I said, you guys missed a lot. So we're going to jump right into it. Um, one of the main reasons why we wanted to do this class was because of the third testament of the Bible. Mm -hmm. We actually started teaching classes on this back in 2018. And when people started reading the third testament of the Bible, when they got up to the chapter that talks about the Virgin Mary, it's actually chapter 20, which is a whole chapter about Mary, the maternal love of God. A lot of people made the association that because this book talks about our universal mother, that it must have been written by the Catholics. Yeah, you received a lot of comments that I read um, for myself that they were, I think, accusing you of picking up a doctrine that um, belonged to the Catholics. Yeah, Catholic doctrine. And like I said, they, because they read chapter 20, which talks about Mary and said, OK, well, the Catholics worship Mary and this book has a whole chapter on Mary. Then this must be a Catholic doctrine. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. But we're going to find out that that's not actually the case. Because when we come over to the document called Own Devotion of the Rosary, right. we, we actually find out who it is that they're worshiping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, just as a little background, um, the reason why I got into this was because of how this was actually promulgated on the 1st of September in 1883. Okay. This was actually the year before the Third Testament came out. Mm -hmm. The Third Testament came out in 1884. And there was a great announcement of this third testament of the Bible, which we know now as the second coming of the Messiah. The word made flesh itself. For now, it is actually the only the word. There is no flesh associated with it. Um, but we find out back in 1883, there was the whole Krakatoa event, which was the cause of the sky cracking in 1883 mm -hmm. and announcing uh, this great and terrible day of the Lord that we're in now. Mm -hmm. But as I was searching around trying to find out other significant events that happened in 1883, I stumbled upon this so-called devotion of the rosary. Right. Mm -hmm. And I found it really interesting that this pope, Pope Leo VIII, would actually um, institutionalize this doctrine, not only in 1883, but on the... 1st of September. Okay. But anyway, let's skim down through here and let's pull out some fun facts from this so-called own devotion of the rosary. 
Um, we're not going to read the whole thing, but let's go ahead and read the first few verses of it, which I believe will tell us who it is that these guys are actually worshiping. Okay, well, let me ask you this question before we start. At this time in 1883, could we say that the Catholics were the predominant religion of the world or were they, were they not? I mean, was did this Pope... When he wrote this doctrine out, did he um, was it for most people or was it only for a set of people? Well, it's for the Christians. For We're going to find out that this document addresses the Christians. Mm -hmm. It calls the Catholic Church the Universal Church, which encompasses both the Catholics and the Protestants. Right. And just like now, the Catholic doctrine or Catholicism is dominant around the world. Right. Mm -hmm. It is um, more Catholics now around the world. Um, I believe, let's see. So like now the Catholics are dominant. It's right. the dominant religion of the world right now. Right. So this would have been addressed to the majority of the religious world. Right. Mm -hmm. So anyway, let's go ahead and just read, um, a few of these verses. Okay. The supreme apostolic office which we discharge in the exceedingly difficult conditions of these times daily warn and almost compel us to watch carefully over the integrity of the church. The more that the calamities from which she suffers are greater. While therefore we endeavor in every way to preserve the rights of the church and to obviate or repel present or continuing dangers we constantly seek for help from heaven, the sole means of effecting anything, that our labors and our care may obtain their wished for object. Okay, so this is kind of a prayer. Right. Okay, and I think a lot of people think of that when they hear the word rosary, they think of the prayer mm -hmm. of the rosary. Mm -hmm. Well, like we said, we want to educate people so even the people with these beads may not be familiar with where that all came from. Mm -hmm. And so that's what this document is all about. So let's continue. We deem that there could be no sure and more effectual means to this end by any religion and piety to obtain the favor of the great Virgin Mary, the mother of God, the guardian of our peace, and the minister to us of heavenly grace, who is placed on the highest summit of power and glory in heaven, in order that she may bestow the help of her patronage on men who through so many labors and dangers are striving to reach that eternal city. Now, this was the first thing that jumped out at me when I was skimming through this document was how it refers to her as the mother of God. Mm -hmm. Not the mother of the Messiah, but mm -hmm. actually the mother of God, who we know as our Heavenly Father, how would mm -hmm. be his name. So this would actually put her in a higher position than him. Yeah, and then it says, who is placed on the highest summit of power and glory in heaven. Yeah, so that puts her in the highest position in heaven. Yeah, right? that it seems to what, be what it's reading, yeah. Absolutely, and it is actually going to say this more in different ways. Let's go on. Now that the anniversary, therefore, of manifold and exceedingly great favors obtained by a Christian people through the devotion of the rosary is at hand, we desire that the same devotion should be offered by the whole Catholic world with the greatest earnestness to the Blessed Virgin, that by her intercession, her divine son may be appeased and softened to the evils which afflict us. Right. So this is kind of strange here, mm -hmm. how these this document is asking the Catholic Church or the Universal Church or the Christian world to actually pray with the highest veneration to the Virgin Mary, asking her to tell her son, who we know as our Messiah, to let up off of us a little bit. What does it say? Yeah, so that her peace. divine son may be appeased and softened mm -hmm. in the evils mm -hmm. which affect us. So this is saying, first of all, that the evils that affect us are generated from the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we ought to pray to this Virgin Mary to ask him to stop yeah yeah that's really strange <laughs> but anyway let's go on and therefore we determine venerable brethren to dispatch to you these letters in order that informed of our designs your authority and zeal might excite the piety of your people to confirm themselves to them so they're venerating this mary 
to the highest position even in heaven. Yeah, a position higher than the most high. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's look at verse 2. It has always been the habit of Catholics in danger and in troublous times to fly for refuge to Mary and to seek for peace in her maternal goodness, showing that the Catholic Church has always and with justice put all her hope and trust in the mother of God. Okay, wow. again, it's talking about this mother of God, but notice how it's saying that, that this Catholic Church has put all mm -hmm. of their hope in the mother of God, this mother of God. Yeah, you know, we read this yesterday, and I don't know if I saw all of this. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're saying that who, who we always have put all of our hope, not some of our hope or portion, but all of our hope in someone other than the Most High. Yeah, and notice that part right there where it says always. Mm -hmm. Right? So we recognize that the Virgin Mary came into existence around the same time as our Messiah here in the flesh. Mm -hmm. So how it is that they always worshiped this Virgin Mary even before the Messiah was born, well, I guess we'll find out when we get into the scripture. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And see where all of this is coming from. Anyway, let's go ahead. And truly, the Immaculate Virgin, chosen to be the mother of God and thereby associated with him in the work of man's salvation, has a favor and power with her son greater than any human or angelic creature has ever obtained or ever can gain. How, now, how do they get this? When the one reference that we have in the Bible, when the interaction between Mary and her son was when, you know, they lost him in the mm -hmm. temple at 12 years old. And when they found him and seemingly ready to chastise him, the Messiah put Mary in her place mm -hmm. and said he was out handling his father's business. But according to this document, it seems as if they're, they have equal power. Yeah, equal, equal power. Favor. Right. So they are, again, venerating her above our Messiah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's go on. And as it is her greatest pleasure to grant her help and comfort to those who seek her, it cannot be doubted that she would deny and even be anxious to receive the aspirations of the universal church. Now, we reference the Third Testament of the Bible. And in the Third Testament of the Bible, what we found is that just as the Messiah was the incarnate of the Word, in other words, he was the Word made flesh, mm -hmm. we find out that his mother Mary was the incarnation of the Holy Spirit. Right. So mm -hmm. this universal mother, who we recognize as Mary, does deserve our veneration. Right. But again, the question is, is that who the Catholic Church is talking about? Right. Is, is the same one we call the Mother Mary? Is this who they are referring to as this Mother of God? Okay. Is this the same being? Right. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's go on to three. This devotion, so great and so confident to the August Queen of Heaven, has never shown forth with such brilliancy as when the militant church of God has seemed to be endangered by the violence of heresy spread abroad or by an intolerable moral corruption or by the attacks of powerful enemies. Now, when I first read this or first listened to it, it was a YouTube uh, video that, that reads this. Um, I stopped here because I seem to remember this queen of heaven and that didn't ring out as our mother Mary to me. Mm -hmm. So I went in and did a Bible search for the Queen of Heaven. And what we find is over in the book of Jeremiah, it's mentioned five times, mm -hmm. but not in a good light. Right. Matter mm -hmm. of fact, go ahead and read Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 18. Okay. The children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the woman knead their dough to make cakes to the Queen of Heaven. And to pour out drink offerings unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger. So here is our first significant hint that this is not actually our mother Mary. This is not actually the mother of the Messiah that they're actually worshiping, that they're calling the queen of heaven or that they're calling the mother of God. This is actually a whole nother God. This is another deity that they're actually worshiping here. Right, because for one, it's found in the book of Jeremiah and... That is an Old Testament book. Yeah, and this kind of goes back to, you know, what it said at first is how they always right. mm -hmm. have 
gone to the queen of heaven or gone to the mother of God, even before the Messiah existed. Well, we see here that Jeremiah was talking about it way back then, how these who we now know as Catholics were worshiping the queen of heaven, even back then, mm -hmm. as they were worshiping the other gods, mm -hmm. making sacrifices to these other gods. Right. So that's definitely not our universal mother. Right. It's not the, the Holy Spirit. It's right. not the mother of our Messiah. This is a, a whole, pagan God. Yes, yeah, a whole other deity that is definitely, they're using the sacrifices and offerings that they have um, to give to her to anger the Most High. Absolutely. So then I came in and started trying to find out, okay, who is this Queen of Heaven? Mm -hmm. And one of the first things that popped up is the queen of the Olympian gods. Of course, okay. we can't pronounce these names, but we see here, this is actually who they're talking about. This is found in the ancient Greek religion. This is the sister wife mm -hmm. of their highest god. As mm -hmm. far as their Greek gods are concerned, their mm -hmm. highest god, this is the sister wife. Mm -hmm. So then I came in understanding how they do this, you know, when it comes to the Greek gods, they really are into idol worship and the name of these gods really doesn't matter. They can give them any name they want as long as you bow down to that idol. Mm -hmm. They'll give them the name of the Messiah. They'll give them the name of Mary. They'll give them the name of Peter or Moses or anybody. They got statues of everything down there. Mm -hmm. And all they do is put a name on them that the Christian world can relate to and other religions can relate to in hopes of getting them to actually bow down to these idols. Right. Like I said, oh, oh, like you said um, a few minutes ago, offending mm -hmm. the one true God, the mm -hmm. most high. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we look and we see if there's actually an association with this Greek God, the mother of the Olympian gods, and who the Catholics are worshiping, calling the mother Mary, we look and see, okay, what are the distinguishing features of this particular God and what we find out is that she wears a crown and or a veil which hangs down the back of her neck always always mm -hmm. this this is how you recognize these gods so when it comes to this particular goddess which which says here's the goddess of marriage goddess of sky is the queen of gods you see there you'll see that she has a crown or a diadem she has a veil and to show that she is the queen of their most high God, mm -hmm. she has a scepter. Yeah, I think one of the things that stands out where it says that um, her veil frequently hangs down the back of her head to characterize herself as the bride of this God. Um, and, you know, even if you can't see the face, if you would just see that figure of that veil in the back, you, your mind automatically flips to... This is uh, a picture of the Mar the Virgin Mary. Absolutely. Yeah. Matter of fact, here's a picture over here. And you can see that there's the scepter. There's the crown. There is the veil down the back there. This is actually who the Catholics are worshiping. The Queen of Heaven. Mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the sister wife of their pagan gods here. So the answer to the question is they're not worshiping Mary at all. People, you know, should understand that there is no association with the Third Testament or the Universal Mother at all because the Catholic Church, at least those who are actively doing this, are bowing down to an idol of this particular Greek God here. Yeah, and you know, it makes me wonder, do um, Catholics know this? Because, you know, it says in Jeremiah, the queen of heaven. But then we read here on Google that it is the queen of heaven is a name that the Catholics give to the Virgin Mary. Well, why would they do that if there's going to be controversy? Um, you know, it makes me also think about how they put things plainly in our sight. And we choose to ignore them because we want to always see the good side of it. But... I don't know. Taking taking advantage of our goodwill. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. That's exactly what they're doing. Um, 
taking advantage of, you know, like you said, we, we want to believe everything is on the up and up. Mm -hmm. So when someone down there at the Catholic Church hears them venerating the Mother Mary, they think nothing's wrong with it. Mm -hmm. But then when you start digging in and scratching in some of these documents that they're using, you find out that you're not worshiping Mary, the right. Most High, the Son, anything. You're actually caught up in paganism. Yeah, you're worshiping a statue of uh, the Queen of Heaven, who is a deity, um, or the wife, or sister wife, or mother of another um, deity that the Most High t tells us not to worship other gods. Yeah, and we see her mentioned over in the book of Revelation chapter 18 and verse 7, when it's talking about this so-called queen. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, go ahead and read that. Okay. How much she has glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she said in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Now, you guys can do your research on this. I don't have a reference right now. But what this is referring back to is Nimrod and in Babylon where all of these pagan religions started. It kind of started with this queen of heaven and Nimrod and their son, Um making up the trinity of the pagan gods. Mm. You have Nimrod, who was married to this lady, and she ended up killing him, or he died, they say, by way of a pig or something like that. But the thing is, after he died, she venerated him, turned him into a god by saying that he came back to life in the middle of the night mm -hmm. in the form of an evergreen tree, which sprouted from a dead trunk of mm -hmm. an evergreen tree. And around this evergreen tree, there was all of these gifts for the community. Mm -hmm. What does that sound like? Mm -hmm. That sounds like Christmas. Well, that's where we actually get Santa Claus from. Right. He comes from Nimrod. That's, mm -hmm. that's who Santa Claus is. When you're looking at the evolution of Santa Claus, it goes back to Nimrod. And so, but to continue the story, now that Nimrod was dead, his wife, who wanted to be queen, was still yet unsuccessful because they had a son. And of course, that son would have been exalted to be the king, mm -hmm. still leaving her as still only the mother of the king. Right. So what she ended up doing was marrying her son. Correct. Mm -hmm. And that's what actually put her in the position of the queen. And that's what Revelation is talking about when it says, I sit as a queen and am no widow. In other words, she she's not the widow of the king. Right. Like she normally would have been when the king died. You know, she would have just been a widow. No, she went on to find a way to turn herself into the ruling authority of Babylon and actually deified herself. Her husband and her son, we recognize those as Easter, Christmas, and Valentine's Day, respectively. Right. And now when she sits in, you know, the majority of Catholic churches and around a lot, a whole lot of um, religious Catholics uh, neck as um, the Queen of Heaven, so-called, a.k.a. the Virgin Mary. Absolutely. And even... To this day, the Pope are driving people to the worship of this pagan god. I mean, uh, even this year, associated with the Ukrainian war, did our current Pope drive the whole Catholic world and half the Christian world into idol worship to this Queen of Heaven as he had them to bow down to her? Wow. I didn't, I didn't see that. I heard you mention it, but I did not see he it. He absolutely yeah. went in and had the whole Catholic world to bow down to this queen of heaven in hopes, like you said in this document, that she would cause her son to raise mm. some of the uh, uh, calamities that were going on over there in the Russian-Ukrainian war. That's good because what's actually happening is the same thing that was happening back in the book of Jeremiah, where they're actually bowing down to this queen of heaven mm -hmm. and um, hoping to get results mm -hmm. by way of her instead of um, by way of the Most High. Yeah, absolutely. So the Catholic Church is not worshiping Mary. They're actually exalting this pagan God, which is actually going to cause the world to tilt towards paganism a little more, just a little more. But the thing about it, the more the world tilts towards paganism, the more we're in trouble from the elements we learn in 
certain texts, mm -hmm. the more they worship these gods, these false gods, the more our protection goes away. We're kind of giving up the protection of the Most High in favor of protections from these idols, wood and stone that they're building, hoping and, and you know, calling on these um, artifacts to actually help to save us. Well, well, that answer, answers a lot of questions for me because I always wonder why would they worship, you know, any figure or anybody else other than the Most High, even, you know, bowing down to this uh, figure of what they call, you know, the Christ. Um, it's actually the same thing. It's the same thing. that They have that certain figure, which they mm -hmm. wanted to worship anyway. The long flowing hair right. um, would be one of the characteristics, you know, distinguishing features of that particular God. And all they did to do to worship him, to venerate him, was to give him the name of the Messiah. And now half the Catholic or half the Christian world, yeah, well, I'm going to say right. all of the Catholic <laughs> and half the Christian world now has a picture of this pagan God on their wall. And if you go in there and you say, well, where's the Messiah? Instead of them pointing to their heart or even pointing to the scripture or even, you know, pointing to, you know, nature and says he's in everything. They actually point to a picture on the wall and say, there he is. Well, you say half. I would say probably 90 yeah, percent. That's because you're from the Bible Belt. Yeah, right? my, my family has plenty of them all scattered around their homes. My family used to and then I took them down. But anyway, <laughs> so to answer the question. Are the Catholics worshiping Mary? The answer is no, they're not. They're not worshiping Mary at all. This is just another one of their pagan gods that they just give the name Mary and causing the world to tilt towards paganism. So when they you ask them, why are y'all worshiping Mary? And they say, we're not worshiping Mary. You say, okay, you're mm. right. They're not. <laughs> they're actually not worshiping Mary. But there is one more thing that I want to bring out of this document when it's telling them about a special month okay. that they are supposed to do this rosary when they're supposed to venerate this God. Mm -hmm. they, ha they actually have a whole month devoted to the veneration of this Queen of Heaven. Okay. Matter of fact, let me get you to start reading right here. Not only do we earnestly exhort all Christians to give themselves to the recital of the pious devotion to the rosary publicly or privately in their own house and family, and that unceasingly, but we also desire that the whole of the month of October in this year should be concentrated to the Holy Queen of the Rosary. So this month of October is the month that they actually celebrate this Queen of Heaven. Wow. And you're wondering what's the significance of the month of October? Mm -hmm. Every Feast of Tabernacles falls in the month of October. Right. Every one. Because mm -hmm. of how the sacred calendar works and how we have the Day of Remembrance, which would start the seventh month after the new moon that falls after September the 18th. Mm -hmm. Counting 14 days later, absolutely every Feast of Tabernacles will fall in October. So while we're supposed to be celebrating the High Holy Day, we are actually praying to a false god. Yeah. So yeah, while we're doing that over here, while we're in our tents and being obedient to the word, yeah, this is the month in which they decided that they're going to recite the rosary right. to the Queen of Heaven. But that shouldn't be surprising considering how they did the exact same thing for Passover, right. causing the feast of their pagan feast of Easter mm -hmm. to fall almost every year. It doesn't not, not quite so accurately as far as Easter is concerned. They, they actually miss a year every so often, but 90% of the time you're going to have their pagan holiday of Easter to fall smack dab in the middle of the high holy feast of unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. So this is what they're doing. They're stamping out the holy days and replacing them with their pagan worship. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But again, we're not here to pick on anybody. If that's your faith, is that what you choose to do? So be it, you know, but you know, we really want to educate people. Let them know, you know, this is actually what's going on here. Um, 
And for those who find themselves in a situation, go read Revelation chapter 18. Um, and the rest of the book, which tells us, you know, to come out of this religion, to come out of that religion, to leave that religion, to walk away from it. Else, they're going to receive those same plagues that are to fall upon that religion. Mm -hmm. So if you find yourself in this position, you might want to take on a little bit of repentant heart. Mm -hmm. um, that, that wood and a stone is not helping you anyway. Mm -hmm. So you might as well turn towards our Father Creator for our salvation, for our protection, for our uh, provisions and everything else that He wants to provide for us. Right. If, you know, this pagan worship wouldn't get in the way. Yes. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and close this video out. If you got anything out of it, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. Mm -hmm. But leave us a comment either way. And shalom. Shalom.